Hey, everybody, just wanted to, we're going to start something new this week. We're planning on doing this anyway, but with the online uh, streaming and with everything that's going on, uh, we're just going to start anyway this week. And it's just a segment called That's What He Said. And we may come up with a better title later down the road, but it's just a review of Sunday, kind of some different takes from what was preached. You know, there's a saying out there that it's one thing to, one thing to believe you said something, but it's another thing to hear somebody else's response to what you said. So I may have this, or I thought I preached this, but this is really what someone else heard. So this week we got Pastor Tim joining us and Pastor Marshall. So we'll rotate out the group from week to week. So we're just going to jump on in. You can follow along. And uh, if you want to send in uh, kind of your take on, on what you received from the Word Sunday, from what was preached, we, will, we would definitely love to uh, talk about it. So we were in Mark chapter uh, 2, and it was a story of the, where Jesus heals the paralyzed man that was dropped through the roof. I'm going to say dropped, but he was, he was lowered through the roof to where Jesus was because there was a, a crowd there. Um, the first thing, the first point that covered was that these men who carried the paralyzed man were willing to be inconvenienced. Was there anything that kind of stood out to you through the beginning part of that passage? Yeah, for, for me, you know, when you look at Jesus, he always had a crowd around him. And so I feel like when it comes to, you know, you and your personal life, if you, if you live in a manner uh, of how Jesus lived and you carry the hope uh, that he offered, uh, people are going to are willing to go the extra yard to hear, hear the hope that Jesus has. And so um, for the willing to be inconvenienced, I think, you know, when you have something so special that, that is the good news of the gospel, you know, you, you are willing to be inconvenient. And for you personally, when you're trying to bring someone with you, go the extra yard. You're willing to go the extra mile to, um, to carry someone with you to hear this good news because you know personally how much it has affected you. Mm-hmm. Tim, you got anything on that? Yeah, you, you said it a lot before. You know, Jesus was, was willing to be interrupted. He was mm-hmm. interruptible. And, you know, the, everything about Christianity is really, uh, you know, at, as far as to our sinful nature is inconvenient. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and God's called us to a higher standard. Yeah. And, you know, just as these friends were willing to inconvenience their lives, this wasn't something that was an easy thing to do to carry a grown man, you know, all of his body weight to get him there, to climb up on the roof, to get him lowered down. But it was so that this man could could have a, a miracle moment, and um, and I think that as we are faithful to what God's asked us to do, and and we allow ourselves both in our in our Christianity and our walk with Him to be inconvenienced and allow other people to interrupt our lives, that we that we will see these miracle moments happen in our own lives. I mean, think about it too. I mean, they could have gotten to the carrying this man to the outside of this house, and saw the crowd and thought, you know what, today's just not the day. Yeah. They could have come up with an excuse, but they saw the solution. And I don't know that I would have had the courage in that moment to, to be willing to bust through the roof yeah. of someone else's uh, house. But that was before everybody was, uh, um, you know, very uh, angry and willing to sue you over the repair of their house. I mean, you don't even see in the story where they, they go and repair it, but I'm sure it happened. So whether they were liable for it or not, but I do love the fact that they didn't come up with an excuse they saw it through to make sure that man had an opportunity because of I who like Jesus is. they knew the is. importance of what was yeah. inside. So. Mm-hmm. And then we, we talked about, you know, in the next verse there in verse 4, um, and the circumstances was them kind of opening up the roof of how circumstances are not going to determine our uh, outcome. It kind of goes hand in hand with it being inconvenienced. But how many great things have ever happened in your life that really the circumstances didn't really match the outcome of what was happening. Oh, man. I mean, I, I think probably the, the times where I've grown the most was really in the most trying times of my, mm-hmm. you know, my walk with the Lord. You know, the things that, that almost where he, he seemed distant were really the times where he was saying, I need you to draw into me. And, um, and so, I mean, hands down, you know, I think that the, the things that we experience as, as believers are uh, not always going to happen at times where... Yeah. It's like, well, if I do this, I'm going to see this happen. I think a lot of times it really just comes from just being obedient and being consistent in our walk with God, and we will see, uh, see the fruit of that maybe in a later season. Mm-hmm. I definitely agree. You know, when, when God puts something on your heart, uh, it may not make sense. It may not, you know, to everyone else uh, look like the best idea. But when God puts something on your heart, 
whether it's, it's changing jobs or even, you know, inviting someone to church, it may be inconvenient, but, you know, God may place something in your heart to where, yes, it looks like inconvenient to the world, but when you are faithful, God will show up in incredible ways and show you that, hey, you know, this didn't look like the best option, but when you listen to me, like, I, I'm always the best option. I'll always give you the best advice there possibly is. And so um, just being able to, to, to listen to God in these situations, uh, yes, it doesn't look like an, an ideal time. Um, maybe for me and my family, once we moved to Fairhope, did it look like the, the, uh, a very smart idea? You know, on the outside, probably we're, mo- we're moving away from family where my wife was uh, eight, eight months pregnant. We had to sell a house that we just bought and built. And so, but God has blessed us in so many ways because we were obedient mm-hmm. to something that looked inconvenient. And I don't know if it, it, I don't know if every situation always works out to where you have a, um, an aha moment right. of this is because I did this, God did this. I don't think God's bound to do anything. You do whatever he wants to, however he wants to. And part of our worship of him is just a simple obedience that we walk in and them being um, obedient in that moment made way for the provision of the miracle for that guy that he needed. And I can tell you that if nobody else was happy about that moment, those men that carried him and the guy that got the healing was definitely ecstatic at the fact that they pushed through, didn't come up with an excuse, and was able to see their friend and then him be able to experience the healing power of Jesus in that moment where he got a, he was able to get up from his mat. The next thing we talked about in the, towards the end of the story is when Jesus says to him, and it's something that's always stuck out to me when I've read the story uh, from the beginning when, as a brand new Christian. Um, you know, you hear a lot of people say, you know, Jesus wipes away your sins, throws them into the deepest sea to never be remembered, quoting uh, in the Old Testament. And, and, and though I believe that's 100% accurate, that God doesn't hold our faults against us once we've come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Um, but there are things that you remember about yourself uh, from before you were a believer. And the statement that Jesus made to him to arise, take up your mat and walk, uh, always stood out to me of why would this man who was in a paralyzed condition ever want to carry the mat that he had been bound to for any season of his life? Why would Jesus want him to carry that mat away from there? Anything like stick out, is it, stick, anything stick out to you about that? Yeah, I mean, I think that when, when you said it uh, or when we watched it Sunday morning and, and, uh, and was kind of going through that, I remember thinking that and I was just like, man, it's crazy how... Uh, Oftentimes, the very things that God has delivered us from is really an opportunity that he wants to use later in life, hmm. once we've had some distance from that, to use that as a testimony. Because honestly, you know, the, the things that we see where God has worked was really a, a result of his power, mm-hmm. but also as a, uh, as a sign of our obedience and willingness to walk with him. And I think that as we uh, live a life of surrender to the Lord, that we're going to have these opportunities to be able to use hey, here's what God did in my life as I surrendered to him, and here's how I've seen freedom. And here's, Mm -hmm. you know, I struggled with maybe the very same thing that you're struggling with, and God's aligned our paths to to walk together for this season so that I can tell you, hey, there Mm -hmm. is hope in Christ, and that hope is what delivered me from the very same thing that you're struggling with now. And I stand as a a living testimony of what God can do with a life Mm -hmm. that is surrendered to him. Yeah. Same. I mean, it's it's a reminder of your testimony, what God has done in your life. So, yeah, I I 100% agree. Yeah, I think that just remembering that through this situation, we're in this series in the gospel, that the gospel is Jesus, and the gospel makes broken people whole and puts the broken pieces back together again. He can heal marriages, put families back together. He can heal the sick. He can raise the dead. I mean, there's nothing that limits our Lord. But I think the the beauty of it you know, as well is that understanding that the pain that we have gone through truly does position us for our purpose. Yeah. It's made you who you are today. And so I just encourage you, as we just had a chance to just, as we've had a chance to just sit here and, and just come and, and join you on this video, just to review a little bit of what was said on Sunday. Hopefully there's something that you took away from this Sunday that gives you uh, really some substance to your faith and, and able to tackle anything that comes up through this week or the season to come. 
So we, we're thankful that you're, that you're tuning in and watching this. And we want to kind of continue this in a very just casual way just to yeah. talk about uh, what was said on Sunday and, and to hear maybe just in a difference of what Marshall heard and Tim heard from that sermon than the way that I intended it. So it's always neat to me whenever I hear someone will send me a message and say, Pastor, what you said about this, this is exactly what it spoke to me. And I'm like, I don't even remember saying that. So it's kind of why we're just making the joke of, hey, that's what he said. Uh, it's not that you're standing up and saying, that's what you think, like making, saying it's just not accurate. You're saying, that's what he said, and going, this is what I heard. And so we'd love you to just to, to look over and, and just remember the things that stood out to you from the message as the Lord uh, laid it on my heart and be able to share it with you and, and look forward to the great things that God's going to do. I know through this season, it's like a broken record. Go, we're looking forward to the great things God's going to do. But it's the faith in my heart as a pastor during this season and time as a church to see God do great things. And as we have been limited in some ways, we serve an unlimited God that's given us the ability to join you in ways like this yeah. and to stay connected and believe God for the great things tomorrow. Anything to add before we roll? Good to go. Hey, thank you guys for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Stay connected uh, on social media, and you can pay attention to the website, to the Stay Connected tab. We'll update you on all the things that are coming up. Next time we see you should be Wednesday night Bible study. God bless you. See you later.